Home of Super Bowl 49 welcomes you to the following presentation of the National Football League. Tom Coughlin, who started his NFL head coaching career at Jacksonville and came here at 04. Two Super Bowls on his resume and Jason Garrett who took over in the middle of the 2010 season and his first game as a head coach that year was here in game nine and he won at the Meadowlands. Dallas won the toss. They have elected to receive Josh Brown will be kicking off for the Giants on a pretty still night. Dwayne Harris back to accept the kick for the Dallas Cowboys. 51 degrees at the Meadowlands. It's warmed up after a very cold week in the Big Apple and in Byron. So we begin with a touchback. Harris downing it there. And let's take a look at the Cowboy offense. Tony Romo, Eastern Illinois University. DeMarco Murray, Oklahoma. Dez Bryant, Oklahoma State. Terrence Williams, Baylor. Jason Witten. Tennessee. James Hanna, Oklahoma. Tyre Smith, USC. Ron O'Leary, University of Memphis. Travis Frederick, Wisconsin. Zach Martin, Notre Dame. Doug Freed, Northern Illinois University. And that offensive line has really come together. Three number one draft choices. They've molded brilliantly, and Murray leads the league in rushing, and here he is to the left side. He's averaging 5.1 yards per carry and picks up about three and a half here. So Romo, he's been terrific in the month of November throughout his career. Second best in NFL history in the month. Otto Graham, the only one with a better mark. And then, of course, he was hurt in the Washington Monday night game. He was able to finish the game with those two small fractures in his back. Missed the following week's game against Arizona. Went to London, played there, has the bye week, and here he is tonight on second down and seven. And his first pass of the game is dropped. Over the middle by Gavin Escobar, their number two tight end. A guy who caught two touchdown passes against the Giants when they met in Texas last month. Let's take a look at Tony Romo here on his initial drop back. In London two weeks ago, you could clearly see the pain as he tried to move around. And, of course, movement such a big part of his game. What they would love to do is be able to establish the run. They've done it all season long and allow Tony to just go with the play-action passes. Hopefully get some deep shots down the field to Des Bryant. They like him to hand off about 35 times tonight. Come away nice and healthy because they're going to play in four days on Thanksgiving against Philadelphia at home. Third and seven. Great protection. Deep downfield into triple coverage and incomplete. Des Bryant, and one thing about Bryant, he will draw a crowd. Watch the aggressive move by Tyron Smith coming out here on Jason Pierre-Paul. If the Giants are going to get after Romo tonight, they're going to have to do it with Pierre-Paul. They just don't have the pass rushing threat that they once had. But some of those marginal shots like you saw there by Jonathan Hankins, they're just going to take them. They're going to put Tony Romo on the ground when they get a chance. Chris Jones to punt, and the Giants are going to have Beckham back to receive. So Tom Coughlin cannot see enough of Odell Beckham, but this time it's a an angled kick, and it's a beautiful kick, and there's no run back as it bounds out of bounds at the 20-yard line. And let's take a look at the Giants starters. Eli Manning, Ole Miss. Rashad Jennings, Liberty University. Ruben Randall, LSU. Odell Beckham Jr., LSU. Preston Parker, Florida State. Larry Donnell, the G, Brown State. William Beatty, UConn. Adam Snyder, University of Oregon. J.D. Walton. Baylor. John Jerry, Ole Miss. Jeff Schwartz, Oregon. Schwartz makes his first start as a Giant. They have reshuffled that offensive line. The same five guys had started the first 10 games with two switches tonight up front from the 20. Running back is Jennings. He takes the handoff, and the Cowboys are there to greet him after a gain of a couple. Brandon Carr makes the tackle. Well, we saw what Romo's done in November then there's Eli flipping around 16 and 23 his worst in any month and of course he had six interceptions all season long until last week against San Francisco when he threw five in one game here yeah but they don't give out any trophies for what happens in this month or, or, or December either. yeah thank you these days they'll hand it out in February that's the date of the Super Bowl Feb 1 Jennings 
nice hole, but it closes quickly. And he's swarmed by a passel of Cowboys at the 25. It'll be third down and five. Jamil McLean right here has really taken over Rondo McLean. I'm sorry, he's taken over this leadership of this defense coming off that MCL injury. He's a guy that is just, they've had a lot of injuries at the linebacker position this year. And with his leadership, though, this defense has surprised a lot of people. McLean was active in London but didn't play. So he's been off for a couple of weeks. Here comes a corner blitz, something they do with some frequency, and the pass is caught over the middle by Beckham, and he gets ripped to the turf by Barry Church after he picks up a first down. Odell Beckham Jr. Tried to bring the blitz, and Beckham came in right behind it. But this young man is one of those guys that you just have to find as many different ways to get him the football as you possibly can. Electric in and out of cuts. Almost nobody so far this year has been able to stay with him. The Giants picking up the pace, going no huddle here. Manning dancing around, he'll dump it off to Jennings. Gets a nice block, another one, and turns it into a gain of close to seven as we take a look at the Dallas D. George Selden, South Florida. Nick Hayden, Wisconsin. John Crawford, Boise State. Jeremy Mincy, Florida. Bruce Carter, North Carolina. Rolando McClay, University of Alabama. Anthony Hitchens, Iowa. Brandon Carr, Grand Valley State. Barry Church, Toledo. J.J. Wilcox, Georgia Southern. Orlando Scandrick, South Central Los Angeles. And so the Giants going no huddle again with Jennings. Up to the 44-yard line. Now it'll be third down and three. The Cowboy defense so much better than they were last year. Hard to be any worse. They were last in the league. Beckham now lines up in the backfield. Flares out. Eli looked that way then finds the open man at the 41 of Dallas. Ruben Randall takes it to the 35. Another of the LSU guys. Randall played there, as did Beckham. Anytime you take Odell Beckham inside, it's going to create some lanes. And some of those passing opportunities, just because you use a guy like Beckham as a decoy, they move him into the backfield, drew everybody's attention, and then hit the slant to the outside. Now there's Beckham. Press coverage at least at the outset. Skandrick is Dallas's best DB. Maybe the best defensive player overall. And threading his way but not for much goes Jennings. Here's Barry Church making the tackle. I say that because when you ask some of the Giants about the Dallas D, the first guy whose name comes up is Orlando Skandrick. Yeah, they really feel like he is their best player. He's a guy that's going to play outside during the base defense, and then when they get into their nickel look, he'll come in on the slot and uh, oftentimes blitz him. They like to bring him after the quarterback. Now Andre Williams comes in in the backfield. Williams is a rookie out of Boston College. So quite a bit of action when Jennings was on the shelf for four games. Cowboys want to stunt up front, put the pressure on. Pass is caught, and finding his way, Daniel Fells just a little short of the first down. It'll be third and inches. New offensive coordinator for the Giants this year after Kevin Gilbride retired has been McAdoo. For several years, worked under Mike McCarthy in Green Bay. He's brought a new offense here. And on the other side, there is the defensive coordinator for the Cowboys. They're third and three years. Rod Marinelli. Longtime old school coach, many years with the Bears, taking over for Monty Kiffin, who's still on the staff. Third and inches. And they give it to the fullback, and that's Hymaski for a first down to the 21 yard line. Well, at least so far, this new look offensive line is working out just fine. They've got uh, John Jerry and Jeff Schwartz over here, kind of a new combination working together. Schwartz is a guy that's played a lot of different positions. They were hoping just his sheer bulk alone would end up helping and his experience as well because right tackle has been a bit of an issue here lately. In the new left guard, you saw him 68, Snyder, former 49er, Adam Snyder. Now they fake the end around. 
set up a screen. Jennings. Jennings has a first down and a first and goal for the Giants on a very impressive first drive. They started at their own 20. They've already run 10 plays, five runs, five passes. Going to get Beckham the decoy again. They're trying to draw the attention to Beckham and then go to options off of that. There's Jennings out in the open field. They really hope that their screen game would improve with Rashad Jennings' experience and this new offensive line. A little less than eight to play in the quarter. First drive, Andre Williams is back in. The running back on first and goal. Give it to him. And the Boston College rookie led the nation in rushing. In college, takes it to the three-yard line. Center position here, J.D. Walton is going to have to try and handle the interior blitz there by Bruce Carter. And so far, this opening drive of the Giants, a little like what they did against the 49ers, took it right down the field and scored. Heavy formation here. Hynoski is the fullback. Williams, the fake to him. Eli rolling, stopping, and throwing it home. Had it picked off. Orlando Skandrick. Had it in his hands and couldn't hold on. So it's third down and goal. Uh, just a terrible decision by Eli. That one should have been picked off. You start throwing back across your body like this because everybody is flowing this way. So it may look open, but all of a sudden flashing some guy you never see comes by there and should add the interception. Third and goal. Last week, terrible in the red zone, and they threw a couple of fades. For the chance to take the lead late in the game, and all of those failed. Now it's third and goal. Thirteenth play of the drive. Eli stepping up, fires, touchdown. Odell Beckham. Well, the Giants scored in their first drive last week. And that's the only time they got into the end zone, and tonight, a very impressive 80-yard drive. Nice job by the young rookie, Odell Beckham, just finding the little hole in the zone. No man coverage. You just find a little gap, sit right there on the goal line, and then sit down for the touchdown. So for Eli Manning, catches a break, not getting intercepted on the prior play, comes right back, throws a touchdown pass, and all of a sudden this game feels a little different maybe than what most people thought it might be. Mm -hmm. Tom Coughlin just watched his team convert four for four on third down. Josh Brown with Steve Weatherford holding for the extra point and the Giants with a flag down. Bill Vinovich is tonight's referee. First time we hear from Bill. Cleanly played first eight minutes. Offside. Defense number 32. That five-yard penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. Tries good. Time 13 plays, six runs, seven passes. Beckham into the end zone. Giants seven. Cowboys nothing. This broadcast is copyrighted by NFL Productions for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this broadcast or any pictures, descriptions, or accounts of the game without the consent of NFL. At the 20-yard line, Tony Romo handing the ball off to Marco Murray. Works his way to the 26. Let's take a look at the giant defense. Matthias Kiwanuka, Boston College. Mike Patterson, Los Angeles High School. Jonathan Hankins, The Ohio State. Jason Peel Paul, South Florida. Devon Kennard, USC. Jamel McClain, Syracuse. Mark Hurtwood, Boston College. Dominique Rogers Cromartie, Tennessee State. Andrew Rowe, the U. Quentin Demps, Utah. Zach Bowman, University of Nebraska. From the 27 now on second and short. This time the Giants are able to stop Murray short of the first down. So Murray really coming into his own in his fourth year out of Oklahoma. Picked in the second round in 2011. He's been brilliant. Right now he's on a pace to gain very close to 2,000 yards. Yeah, and it was interesting watching the Giants practice the other day. All Tom Coughlin was doing was yelling, run, run, run to his defensive line. The Cowboys are so fast on that stretch play getting to the edge. He knew these Giants had to run to keep up. 
for the fullback in there as Romo. Well. Romo's going to spin around and open and making the catch in Giants territory is James Anna, who would be your number three tight end. So the Cowboys on third and short go to the number three tight end for a big game, 27 yards. And James Hanna, the least likely of the tight ends to catch a ball. And so they go to the blocking tight end. Great call there by Scott Linehan. Just knowing that the Giants were fully committed to stopping the run game and took advantage. Only had his second catch of the season. From the 44 off the play fake. Romo open at the 26 is Terrence Williams. Another first down. So the Cowboys on the march. Well, once again, you've got eight guys up trying to stop the running game. And now maybe the best sign of all for Cowboys fans, Tony Romo out on the edge, throwing on the run, a little bit of a duck. But the fact that he's able to just make that play, I'm not sure he could have a week ago. At the 26-yard line. Four and a half to go in the opening quarter. To the ground. Through the middle. And Murray to the 23. So he went between the tackles right there for not much. He's averaging 4.3, a little better than the league average, though, when he goes through the middle. But you, you send him to the outside, 5.8 yards per carry, second highest in the NFL. And as far as the Giants are concerned, they're allowing 5.8 the worst in the league on their rush defense outside. Yeah, Jason Pierre-Paul has done a nice job setting the edge at times. They're going to try and load up with Devin Kennard on the outside as well. The linebacker position, they have to contain this run game and squeeze it inside. As Bryant goes in motion, fake it to him and then toss it to Murray and he gets upended as he reaches the 20-yard line. That's Jason Pierre-Paul who comes up to stop it. It'll, it'll be third and four for the Cowboys. That was one heck of a play by Jason Pierre-Paul right there. That thing looked like it was going to be a touchdown. Coming right here, he's on the block of Jason Witten and comes off at the last second. There was nobody else there. That was in the end zone. Perfect tackle. Boy, he really plays well against Dallas. And the Cowboys know that all too well from the past. It's third and four. Romo, great protection, then throws, and that's incomplete. Witten was going down the middle, but Roll was right there. And the drive bogs down. They'll have to settle for a field goal attempt. Well, Eli got lucky with one, and Romo just got lucky with one. He never sees the safety in the middle of the field. He just lofts this thing up, and Entrell Roll had it. Wow, that's a break for both quarterbacks so far in the end zone. Yeah, Scandrick almost had a pick on one side. Then roll here, Hankins. Jonathan Hankins, the defensive tackle. First year as a starter. Three and a half sacks along the front. And it's not close. He is their best defensive tackle. Mm -hmm. And there's Dan Bailey, who right now would uh, have the highest percentage in the history of the league. Two tenths under 90%. Good long distance kicker. Obviously, when you make 90% of your kicks, you're making a lot of them from long range. This one is uh, medium range. 38 yards. Chris Jones to hold it on a windless night. just inside the right upright. So 2.45 to go in the opening quarter. Giants 7, Cowboys 3. On this drive. And takes the ball, and he gets stuffed in the backfield. Anthony Hitchens, and he's a rookie out of Iowa, a guy who really put a great game in London against Jacksonville. And he's right there to make the stop here behind the line of scrimmage. I'm not sure where the Dallas Cowboys would have been this year without Anthony Hitchens. They've had so many different linebackers get hurt. And he has stepped up and played all three linebacker positions and played very well. Play action and the roll. And Manning throws. And 
the catch by Becker. I'm telling you, this guy will make some of the most amazing catches you've ever seen. I mean, that's like a B-plus for him. I, I don't know how you end up covering this guy. He gets out of his breaks as fast as anybody I've seen. And right now, Eli and the Giants are moving. Gain of 13 to the 48. Back we go to the catch. Williams again at two here. If we watched him in pregame warm-up. It was ridiculous to watch him catch the football. But this break coming back out of the ball, we haven't seen anybody this year that's been able to stay with him, that once he starts to break, the defender starts to break, and he's always the first one out of the break. Second and eight. Very frustrating for him and the team in OTAs and during training camp and early in the season with a hamstring problem. But, boy, once he got healthy... He's been something. What a draw here, and the Cowboys are right there again. Rolando McLean, the middle linebacker, makes the tackle. It'll be third down and long. Here he was in pregame about an hour and a half before the game. It was unbelievable. He started catching the ball, and they put music to it. It was, uh, <laughs> but he just put on a show. He just needs one hand. I put my hand up next to his because they were talking about how big his hand was, and I'm about four inches taller than he is. Look at that thing. <laughs> And his fingers are at least half an inch longer than mine. It was, he just catches everything. To the strains of the skaters, Waltz. He wears those gloves, and those gloves make his hands look even larger. Third down and 12. Manning throwing, and that's caught. And they need a 12, and they're going to get it as Daniel Fells, the tight end, pulls it in. So the Giants are converted four for four on third down on the first drive on a third and 12 here. Have a first. Give credit to Daniel Fells, but let's really give credit to this offensive line right now. They have been made anew after what was a disaster against the 49ers a week ago. So bad, they actually let Charles Brown go. And that will take us to the end of the first quarter with the score of the Giants 7 and the Cowboys 3. Sunday night football from the Meadowlands back after these messages. on NBCSN. The Midlife Stadium, home of the Giants and the Jets. Good first quarter, quickly paced at 7-3, New York. And at the 43-yard line, Andre Williams is the running back. Full action. And Manning's going to heave one. Is, oh, there's a flag. Back from a one-handed catch. In the world. Oh my goodness. And Brandon Carr was back there. I mean, he is insane. How do you make that catch? Oh my goodness. This is sick. Put this to music. I don't think he stepped out either. That may be the greatest catch I've ever seen. That's number 39. Penalty's decline. Result of the play. Touchdown. You have to be kidding me. That is impossible. That is absolutely impossible, what he just did. That may be the greatest catch I've ever seen in my life. It's in the conversation. Wow. After being fouled. I mean, he was clearly fouled on the play. And that's clean. That's not... Oh, that's ridiculous. Well, he does it basically with his thumb and his forefinger. <laughs> that is ridiculous. Tom Coughlin said that young man has given all of us a lift. And you have some idea why. Review. Well, the play's under review because it is a, a scoring play. Unbelievable. It's Bill Vinovich. After the stand. play, ruling on the field is confirmed. Touchdown. Once more, at least. His foot clearly in bounds, fights off the foul of Brandon Carr, goes up with his inside hand, never puts the other hand on the ball, stays in bounds. Ridiculous. Josh Brown for the point after. So eight seconds into the second quarter. <laughs> There's so much to talk about with this kid. He's drafted out of LSU. He went to the same high school as the Manning boys. 
He went to their passing camp. He's known Eli since uh, he was in the 10th grade. He was a tremendous star. And his, how about these for bloodlines? His father was a great football player. His mother was a world-class track star. And he grew up playing soccer. He was a world-class soccer player, so he didn't even start using his hands probably until he was 12 years old or so. Look at this catch. I, I, I mean, I've played receiver. I've seen a lot of things. Look at his eyes even going back to that catch. Not even to mention he got fouled on the play. That thing just stuck. It just stuck. It doesn't stick like that, believe me. Oh, my goodness. Well, there, there is your play of the year, maybe of the, I don't know, decade, whatever. I mean, that's just impossible. And he's a fun young man, isn't yeah. he? He's the kind of guy you put in with Victor Cruz when they come back next year in this offense, a little experience in this offense, because they never really did play together very much because Beckham was hurt. Mm -hmm. I'm still getting over that one. I think, yeah, Beckham came back just before Cruz got hurt in Philadelphia. Of course, after the season, so we had going well. And here's Harris to the 23 yard line. So you talk about Beckham and his family and Odell Sr. running back, and there's his mother, Heather Van Norman, and his father ruled with Shaq. So you had Shaquille O'Neal down there. I'm sure Shaq watching the game that I'm going, <laughs> unbelievable, like the rest of us. How even, in the world? Even Shaq with his big hands couldn't do that. No. <laughs> That's awesome. That's just awesome. So now the Cowboys in a hole. Down by 11 against Philly 1 today. They beat Tennessee, so they're 8-3. And, and Dallas would need a win tonight to stay tied for first. The Giants blitz, and the pass is caught by Des Bryant. Who would be the Cowboys answer to Odell Beckham Des Bryant for a first down. Well everybody wants to talk about DeMarco Murray and how big he is Des Bryant's bigger than he is Des Bryant will go inside you can hit him as hard as you want to hit him and he will not flinch. He's a guy once he gets into the open field with these 200 pound defensive backs more often than not he breaks at least one tackle. So now the answer is. It's a show. Let's put on two of the best wide receivers in the game, and let's see who's going to win. Romo, three of his first six for 57. Back to the ground. Nice goal. That closes in a hurry, though. Murray picks up four. Jameel McLean making the tackle. Cowboy owner Jerry Jones looking on. His team, uh, well, they had a six-game winning streak, then lost two straight. Then they won in London, had the bye week, and they come in here and have a very short week. They have the uh, Thanksgiving night game. In Dallas, and you've got John Mara, the president, CEO of the Giants, who talking before the game, just he's, he's looking for something to give him hope. Well, it's a little bit of hope that's appeared tonight. Second down and five from the 40-yard line. Murray picks up the first down with some tough running thrust into the Giant bench by Antrell Roll. And you get a down blocks here and then everybody coming around and this is really well executed on the outside little hole right there but on the outside the wide receivers getting their blocks as well and finally the Dallas Cowboys are getting back to who they are DeMarco Murray on a, an astounding pace a lot of concerns about is he being given too many carries and can he survive it but you talk to these coaches Scott Linehan said he shows up at practice every Wednesday never an ache never a pain ready to go Cowboys with three tight ends and Murray works his way to the 43 yard line Robert Ayers makes the stop for New York you know the one thing that you did have to worry about with DeMarco Murray was the fact that he fumbled the ball quite a bit he had Fumbles in four straight first quarters of, of games to start the season, but just one over the final five games. So seems to have solved that one as well. Five fumbles this year, but most of them early. Lost them all, though. Yep. Second down and six at the 43-yard line. Number again, DeMarco to the 39. 
Well, another guy who's watching tonight is LeBron James, huge sports fan, of course. Man, I just witnessed the greatest catch ever, possibly by Odell Beckham Jr. Wow, you bet. I mean, it's the greatest catch I think almost all of us have ever seen. He almost blew his shoulder out on that one. It went so far behind his head. Here we go. It's third down now, but the Cowboys will have the opportunity to run it twice if they want to. I can't imagine they would cut it from here. Third and two. That play clock is down to one, and Tony Romo is going to have to take a timeout to avoid delay of game. Well, that uh, Dallas Cowboy offensive line. They have the Giants offensive line with Schwartz and Beatty and. Odell Beckham drawing a little bit of a crowd on the Giants side. Doug Free's been around for a while. You got Ronald Leary for Dallas, but they made an effort three years ago. There is Zach Martin. They love him, the right guard, rookie out of Notre Dame. They have three number ones up front with Travis Frederick and Tyron Smith, and that has made such a difference for the Cowboys. Yeah, and I think Zach Martin almost universally now is considered the best of all these guys. I've never had a conversation about a rookie lineman with as many different people on both sides, both the Giants and the Cowboys, saying that they think not only is he going to make the Pro Bowl this year, I think he's the leading vote getter for all guards, but they really feel like that he's still in the running for Rookie of the Year. He has been fantastic, run blocking, pass blocking, and incredible in the screen game. And one of the reasons he was drafted by them is they were looking defense at first, but the defensive guys they wanted were all picked. So then they decided to go offense and pick Martin number one in the draft. Third and two after the timeout. Romo hit as he throws, but he gets it away. And there's Jason Witten, the longtime security blanket at first down. Jason Pierre-Paul is on his toes after having just one tackle in the game against San Francisco. That time takes the hard inside move and drives Tyron Smith, a big man, right back into Tony Romo. So maybe JPP can do what uh, he really has not done a lot of so far this year, and that's get some sacks on Tony Romo. Murray gets a rest. Lance Dunbar is the Cowboy back. They fake the end around, send it to Dunbar, Lance Dunbar inside the 10, forced out at the 6, and the Cowboys will have a first and goal. Got man coverage coming on the outside, and unfortunately, the man coverage didn't see Tony Romo going out of there with the ball. That was Jaron Hosley, and the screen plays have been working for both sides tonight. Got Zach Martin out in front. Frederick as well, providing the convoy. First and goal. Murray back in. On the draw. Murray to the three-yard line, picking and probing and looking for some room. Second down and goal. Kind of feels like an old-time Giants and Cowboys game, doesn't it? You know, a lot on the line for the Dallas Cowboys trying to keep pace with the Philadelphia Eagles and set up a couple of their showdowns yet to come. But for Tom Coughlin, it's always dangerous to bet against Tom Coughlin coming off of a game in which your quarterback was a little embarrassed with those five interceptions. This team was on their toes in practice, and they look ready tonight. They go five wide here. Dunbar and Bryant stacked on the right side. And a little flip goes to Jason Witten for the touchdown. So they spread it out. Go empty. Witten comes in. Takes the little shovel pass. And they go 77 yards, nine plays. There goes Witten here just right across. And... That was so wide open. Ronald Leary, who pulled in front of him, didn't have anybody to block. Leary's going to run into the end zone, and there's just nobody there. So some start to this game. Mm. Crisply played as well. Very few penalties. Dan Bailey to attempt the extra point. Bailey 
pitched inside the upright. Five runs, four passes, Witten into the end zone, 14-10, Giants. So, Jennings is the running back, relies on Beckham again. Jennings to the right side, turns it up, finds room, gain of 11, first down. Nice job there by big Jeff Schwartz. He's going to get out and make this hook block on the outside and give Rashad Jennings an opportunity to hit that crack right there because right now we've seen Jennings a couple of big screen plays and now a run. This is a different-looking Giants offense. And to the left side he goes, and this time he has stopped before he can get on track. McLean makes the tackle. Beckham's night thus far. This touchdown's the most boring thing he did all night. Makes that one. Watch this catch. I thought this catch was good. And it was. And then the three-finger catch. He caught that ball with three fingers. And he did it once in pregame as well. I mean, that wasn't even his first great catch like that. It's good rehearsal. He's got, he has five touchdowns so far this season, and four of them have come against Dallas. Two down there, two tonight. Jennings again, his third straight carry up to the 34. He goes. They picked him up as a free agent, played in Oakland last year. Remember, David Wilson was going to be their guy, but then he was forced into retirement because of a neck injury. So he was out. They had to go out and find a back, and they got him, and they also drafted Andre Williams, and Jennings got hurt. But now he's back, his second game back after uh, he injured his knee against Atlanta. Now the sophistication of the passing game, the blocking schemes, all fits much better when Rashad Jennings is in there. Third down and eight. You got Beckham at the bottom right there. He's going against Skandra. And he looks that way, and that's his made in front of Skandrick. <laughs> Just another grab, and that one was uh, very routine for this guy. Odell Beckham makes a great move here. I mean, Skandrick is right there. Eli, though, is smoking hot. He's yep. now putting it away from the body, giving his receiver a chance. And if you want to play him one-on-one, -on -one, I play pitch and catch all and night long. So no huddle, fast pace. Beckham's already caught five, but I now you got a flag for a full start. Full start. Offense, number 68. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. Adam Snyder making the start at left guard. Yep, Adam Snyder, a guy that's played all five offensive line positions. Weston Richburg had been in there, the rookie second rounder. Might see Richburg some at center before this night is over, but maybe not with the start they've had. I do like the fact that they've been going to this no-huddle offense because the Cowboys are a team that likes to substitute a lot. And by going no-huddle, they've sort of kept the same group out there on the field for a little while. I think it's helped these new offensive linemen. I mean, Cowboys love to rotate the defensive linemen. Play a base through three. Now you got Beckham taking the swing pass. And spilled at the 49-yard line by Sterling Moore. Well, I think that's the third time now that they put Beckham into the backfield. They threw it to other people the first two times, and now finally just get him out in space and give him a chance. Gain of six, second down and nine at the 49. 620 to the half. Giants by four. right there to meet the ball carrier Andre Williams and the Giants who've been so proficient tonight on third down will be faced with a third down and six the Giants are six for six on third down well Larry Donnell is a guy that's done a nice job for him catching the football especially down in the red zone on third down but he needs to be a little bit better blocker there's a big long arm guy and he missed a block on that one that may have sprung it. Five receivers trips to the right side and now Beckham will go there. So you have four receivers to the right side. Eli will pick a favorite one and it's number 13 spinning out of a tackle. Runs into his own man Donnell otherwise he would have had more. Gets to the 35 yard line. Broke away from Scandrick and the Giants seven for seven on third down. 
poor Orlando Scandrick right here. He's got to try and keep up with this mess. There's three guys in front of him. He's just going to get lost, go out and make a little out and back in cut. But the run is what's so impressive. Kind of looks a little bit like a young Victor Cruz. And hard to tell the size of those hands, but they are massive. Ben McAdoo must have had fun drawing that one up with four guys coming off the right side. Now you've got Williams. And Williams, the Boston College rookie, to the 18-yard line. That's a gain of 18. This Jeff Schwartz doing a job in there, right tackle, and this has been a problem again with the hook block here. He's allowed them to get to the edge, and then Daniel Fells gets up on that next level. But this is one heck of a nice run as well by Andre Williams. This entire team, there's no question, this entire team has been lifted tonight by Odell Beckham. And the Cowboys are going to need a timeout. Giants going fast pace. They've already run eight plays on this drive. First down when we come back from the 18. AT&T. Eli Manning comes off a game in which he threw five interceptions. Now tonight, 11 of 12, 161, two TDs, and six of those have gone to Beckham, who has two touchdowns, and Beckham with 97 receiving yards. From the 18, after the Dallas timeout. Through the middle, gain of two, Andre Williams. Second and eight, here comes a flag from behind. Referee Bill Vinovich. After the play was over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, late hit, defense number 92. Half the distance of the ball, automatic first down. That's Jeremy Mincy. They come in from right there. Ooh. Helmet to helmet at the tail end of it. Nice call. I tell you, we've talked so much about Odell Beckham, we've kind of forgotten about the night Eli Manning's having because he was terrible last week. <laughs> it was five interceptions, and I asked him about it. Said basically, you know, do you do anything differently after you have a game like that? And he said, hey, can't be shy. It's the NFL. Just got to go out and go get them. And said, I watched the film. I did my homework, and I'm not backing down, and he hasn't. Got to have amnesia after a week like that. They're, just gonna, they're figuring out where the the ball should be spotted on a half the distance. So the goal here this is what they're going through right now. Cowboys had trouble getting Eli Manning in the first matchup as well. And because of this pace, the same thing's happening here tonight. So now first and goal from the eight-yard line. Williams. And he fights his way. Bowling his way to the two. The ball is loose. The Cowboys think they have it. There's no sign yet from the officials. Was he then? You got Anthony Hitchens who comes away with the ball. But for Giants the moment, going to try and hurry. Well, yeah, because they don't want the Cowboys to to challenge. So the Giants get up to the line of oh, scrimmage. That ball is out. I yeah. can't believe they're going to challenge. Yeah, they're going to have. Yeah. So the there Dallas Cowboys will challenge. And there's the flag thrown by Garrett. I mean, that, that's one of those challenges. It's so important in this situation. You almost can't even wait for the guys upstairs to call it. Just take your chance. And uh, Eli had his arms out like. Come on, guys. you got to mark the ball. Tom Coughlin saying the same thing. You can't give them all day to take a look at that. Right. You have a responsibility. If you call that as our ball, you got to mark it and let's go. The ruling on the field was that he was down by contact. You see the ball starting to come out. Dallas is challenging the ruling on the field as the runner was down by contact. Time out. All right. They'll take a peek across the river. Vinovich under the hood. Back after this. Looking at it, this is a very interesting play on a lot of levels because there's a mass of bodies there. It's a clear recovery. You can tell that by Dallas. The question is, when the ball comes out, you can see the ball coming out, but where is the body? 
Is he down on the ground? And they're waiting for a clear shot of this. There's the ball, but they have to see the ball coming out and where the body was of Andre Williams. Was he down? They ruled on the field that he was down. So if they don't have a, a shot that they're comfortable with that shows you whether he did fumble or not, here comes Vinovich. After reviewing the play, ruling on the field stands. Dallas is charged with third and final timeout and first challenge. That's one of those things where you just can't see the ball. There are too many bodies involved. And Dallas now out of timeouts in the half. I think if you even asked the officials, they would say, I'm 90% sure that was a fumble. But under the rules, you have to be able to clearly see the fumble. And he doesn't have a body part on the ground. I'm mm -hmm. relatively certain of that. But the clear recovery, you didn't see that. You saw him come out with the ball. You knew he recovered it. Yep. But did you see it? And Jason Garrett saying, you have to be kidding me. Everybody in the world knows that was a fumble and we recovered it. And you're going to give them the ball back? Yeah, it looks, like, it looks like he had his right buttock down, right? But that really is the way that instant replay is supposed to work. You're supposed to be able to see... 100% clearly that there was a mistake made, there was a recovery, and boy, does it work to the favor of the Giants right now. Well, this is the home of the Buck fumble. <laughs> yes, it is. We saw it's that on Thanksgiving with Sanchez. Little green in the stadium that night. Little different. Second down and goal. Now you got Williams again to the outside, and then he goes for the touchdown. So the Giants get a break. An inconclusive shot of whether there was a fumble or not, and then Williams takes it in for the score. The other new starter tonight is Adam Snyder, and these veteran players are making a difference. Gets out on the edge, gets just enough of Bruce Carter to get Andre Williams into the end zone. So a huge break for the New York Giants. The Giants have had the ball three times tonight, three touchdowns. the 21st point 318 remaining in the opening half and the Giants on top by 11. No need for Tony Romo to prove his toughness. We've seen him take some shots through the years. He's had surgery 2012 in Washington took that shot right there that led to disc surgery in April of 13. Then in that year at the Redskins, remember this play toward the end when they needed a victory that led to disc surgery in December. This year on the Monday night game at home, that led to a transverse process fracture, two small bones in his back. He took the week, he finished that game against Washington, was off the next week, couldn't play against Arizona, they lost. But then he went and he played in London. He told us last night, he said, you know, we had lost those two games in a row. He said, I felt I just had to get back in there because uh, the season was swinging in the direction that was not very good. Touchback here, Dwayne Harris. So, uh, Tony Romo, about as tough as they get. Yeah, and it's interesting. He said he had to differentiate between the broken bone pain, which that pain was okay, but if it was pain related to the disc, he had to take it easy. You couldn't push through that. So trying to figure out which pain he had was all part of this process. But what he did in London, I thought, was really impressive. He didn't practice on Wednesday, barely on Thursday, a little walkthrough on Friday, and went out and had about a 138 quarterback rating that uh, won the day against Jacksonville. Even before the Redskins game, they were limiting him in practice because, remember, he was coming off surgery at the end of 2013. Had to miss that last game when Kyle Orton got the start on the closing night. Now they start with a draw. Two-yard gain for Murray. Meanwhile, that shovel pass to Witten is a record that he didn't even know about. We mentioned it last night. 38 straight road games in which he has thrown a touchdown pass. Uh, Favre and Hadel, six back. But already this game has turned in favor of the New York Giants because the Cowboys aren't running over this Giants defense. Second and eight. Romo, and he's going to get sacked. First sack of the night, 13-yard line. Demontre Moore 
Third round pick last year out of Texas A&M with the sack. Des Bryant on the outside here is going to get plenty of attention. Drop somebody underneath. Dominic Rogers Cromarty over the top. Jason Witten inside and for Tony Romo. This is not how it was supposed to go tonight. They were supposed to be able to run the ball against this Giants defense that was dead last in the NFL. That has not worked out and now they are playing from behind and the pass rushers are starting to turn loose. Giants take a timeout there first. Tom Coughlin. The best I've seen really at knowing exactly when to take timeouts. It's a third and 17. Wants to conserve some time on the front side of the two minute warning. Cowboys are out of timeouts. Wants the ball back. He figures to get it unless they convert a third and 17. Then he's got a ton of time to move it down the field to Dallas with no time. Well, let's give Perry Fuel, the defensive coordinator, some credit. He knew coming in he had to commit all his resources to stopping the run and force Romo to throw the ball. He thought he would have the edge there, and so far he has. Third and 17. Giant D on the crowd to get loud. They respond. And Romo on a third and 17. Four man rush. Tony stepping up, airing it out. Deep downfield, incomplete. Intended for Brian, covering on the play with Zach Bowman. So the punt, two and a half to go, and the Giants, who have three touchdowns on three drives, will get the ball back. I'll tell you, this cobbled together secondary has been doing a nice job. Dominic Rogers Cromarty has had all kinds of issues, and they have lost Prince of Mukamara, Walter Thurman, Tremaine McBride. All these different guys that were supposed to lead the way, and at least thus far, they are staying with the Cowboys down the field. Meanwhile, you have Beckham back to receive the punt. The left-footed punter, Jones. Beckham, chance to run it back, 36-yard line, swinging to the outside, but hanging with him, staying with him. Nicely covered by Dwayne Harris. Wouldn't let him go and sends him out of bounds. 217 to the half. Swing it out. Jennings, short game. McLean, the tackle. Well, really, we have seen very little pressure on Eli so far in this game. And I, I came in thinking that I really thought this Cowboys defensive line was a little underrated, but not tonight. That's your two minutes to the half. Ball at the 37 yard line. It's second down and eight. Manning hanging in there, and oh, they just got a piece of him, and down he goes. Looks like Selvey came in, and it will be a third down, and a timeout taken here. The Giants tonight have been a thousand percent, seven for seven on third down, average yards to go 5.4. So three possessions three touchdowns and they'll try to do it again here on a third and 14. Well that's what Eli was telling us he said when we're third down and six or less we converted a very high rate we've been getting into trouble in those third and long situations exactly like this third and long situations exactly like this cannot afford to turn it over here. Beckham left side Scandrick had to back off and then Eli's going to go down again at the 22. So Dallas's defense rises to the occasion. That's Mincy, who had the earlier personal foul called on him, who gets the sack. Eli goes down twice in the series. They're going to double Beckham out here with Sterling Moore. No way they're going to give him that one-on-one -on -one crossing route again. And now the pressure of the Cowboys, that relentless effort that they're known for under Rod Marinelli, starting to show. And now the Cowboys have a shot. Fourth and 22, so the punt from Weatherford. Cowboys, when they get the ball, do not have a timeout. And backing all the way up to the 16 is Dwayne Harris. Flag is thrown, so whatever he does is going to come back here. For the moment after the 30, and they'll start even deeper after the penalty. Giants will get the ball when the second half begins. Bryant has been uh, fairly quiet tonight. One reception, 12 yards. Of course, Manning, great night, thanks in good measure to Beckham. 
They had one Beckham for one run. They changed it to a reception. So he has seven catches for 103, seven of the 13 Eli completions. Rogers Cromarty the coverage a minute and one to go plenty of time there's no doubt about it you just have to work the sidelines defensively you have to start to understand that as well there's been McAdoo over on the sideline with Eli Manning feeling pretty good about things until that last drive when the protection broke down second down one Again, he'll make the catch. He'll wrap up at the 48-yard line. Forward progress. Clock continues to run first down. Defensively, you try and hold on to that ball carry as long as possible. Let that clock run. Down under 40. Romo escaping as to dump it down underneath. Murray will try to get out of bounds, but he can't. That's going to cost him precious seconds to the 45. Roll makes the tackle. Tony's got to get up there and spike it. Now they got to get set first. Now he spikes it. So now you've got 18 seconds. Field goal kicker Bailey is very good. So if nothing else, they at least want to get in range for him to make it a one possession game going to halftime. Yeah, longest of this year, 56 yards. So you're probably going to need another completion here to give him a shot. But he is great long range. Five for six this year, 16 of 22 in his career. Third and three. Play clock at two, one. Romo, look out from behind. Tony escapes. Then Tony gets hit. The ball is loose at the 43-yard line. Arm is coming forward. Matthias Kiwanuka, for the moment, it's ruled a fumble. And the giant recovery and a flag down with nine seconds. So is this the empty hand or not? Meanwhile, even if it's an incomplete pass, you only have nine seconds. They're not in field goal range. Here it is again. I'm pretty sure this is the old empty hand coming forward. Right. So that is going to be a fumble. And they are starting to hit both quarterbacks here at the end of the half. Romo showed all the mobility you would hope for out of him, but still fumble, got caught. Recovered by New York. The penalty after the play was over. Personal foul. Dallas, number 62. 15-yard penalty and a first down. Well, that's going to put them, obviously, a lot closer. I'm not sure it's going to get them into field goal range. 15 yards would make it a 57-yard field goal if the Giants wanted to do that. Meanwhile, of course, since it's, well, since it's a turnover, they're, they're reviewing it. They're taking a look at it across the, the river. It has now been confirmed. So the Giants have the ball at the 42. They also have a timeout. So if you'd be looking at a 60-yard field goal attempt here, windless night, but a chance to run a play, and they can even run it to the middle of the field here because they do have that timeout. From the 42. Back into the left side. Get sacked again. That ball is loose. Flag is thrown. I think that's going to be the end of it. That yeah. looked like intentional grounding, if nothing else. Right. You've got Mincy. If it is, it's the end of the half. Foul on the offense. If it's against the Giants for intentional grounding, that'll take all of the time off the clock and take the teams to the locker room. Great job by Mincy getting that yep. pressure. Intentional grounding. Offense number 10. 10 yard penalty. Loss it down. By rule, it's a 10 second runoff. Independence. New York has elected to take their second in charge timeout 
Interesting. To avoid the 10 second runoff. Take a look at this. This is your, uh, <laughs> it's the prevent defense of all time. Odell Beckham against about eight of them. That's about a 50 50 shot after what we're seeing the first half. Yeah, we've got three guys on the goal line. Beckham wide to the right all by himself. They'll want a room to roam and they're going to throw it to him. And they're going to let him take off. And then Beckham tries to stiff arm a guy out of the way. And that'll take us to the end of the half. I knew we'd get there eventually. Giants will get the ball to sharp the third quarter. It's Preston Parker back in the end zone. Again, the Giants trying to snap a five-game losing streak. Three and seven. And the Cowboys trying to go to eight and three and stay even with Philadelphia on top in the NFC East. A yard in Parker. And a good run back for him as he goes out to the 29-yard line, and what do you think we want to show you one more time here? Well, since Al tweeted it out, all kinds of interest in this catch here. Odell Beckham, watch this thing. I'm telling you, I've never seen anything like it. We have so many views of this catch. Spectacular there. He's being fouled, but look, at he catches this ball with three fingers. His thumb, two fingers, the other two fingers never touch the ball. What's the name of the pitcher that M Mordecai, Mordecai three-finger right. Brown. And, and and there's Mordecai, three-finger Odell Beckham now. Pitched for the Cubs at the beginning of the 20th century. You saw a pitch for the Reds back in 1913. Uh -huh. And this is Rashad Jennings up to the 34-yard line. We go to Michelle. Well, I asked Tom Coughlin about that catch since everyone's talking about it, and he said that catch was an inspiration. And any time anyone makes a play like that, it inspires the entire team. So I asked Jason Garrett, what are your priorities in the second half? He said, stop Odell Beckham. I said, how? And he said, we've just got to do it, but it would help if we got some one-on-one -on -one battles won up front. Thank you, Michelle. Is uh, on a second down and five. Stopped about three yards short is Rashad Jennings and um, Coughlin's right about the, it's it's inspired the team uh, you know this was kind of a, a sullen place in a way over the last few weeks because of the five game losing streak the Giants with a mark of three and seven that uh, also created quite a buzz in the crowd yeah but Beckham over the last three weeks has also established himself as a star receiver in this game and you can tell by all the different motions putting him in the backfield some of the shot plays that they are now starting to walk revolve this offense around him and that's Beckham in motion so he lines up flanked out and the pass is incomplete and that's broken up there by McLean intended for Parker. Yeah. Yeah, I think Eli was a little nervous about Rolando McLean here breaking on this football. He saw him and just kind of threw it a little bit behind. But again, the decoy that time of Odell Beckham just didn't pay off. But a big opening stop for the Dallas Cowboys as they try and get back in this thing. Eleven. Here's Rutherford's punt. the eight has a lane but uh, he's going to run out of bounds be run out of bounds up at the 27 yard line it really takes a shot there as well from Spencer Pace. Welcome back to football week in America. Due to time constraints we move ahead in the third quarter. Back to the middle lands we come Dallas has the ball at the 35 yard line. They think Murray step out of bounds after he picks up the first down. Well, one of the really good battles going on tonight, Tyron Smith against Jason Pierre-Paul, and it has been a match, I would say, at least thus far, his favorite Pierre-Paul. Tyron Smith has certainly had his moments in it, but a couple of big plays in this one. Good, solid protection. He's locking on those big hands, but this one right here forced the hold and took away one of the big plays that may have altered that first half. The last play of Dean of 15. And then Murray's going to get tackled behind the line of scrimmage at Zach Bowman coming up to put a shoulder on him. 
second down and 10. And this is always the play caller's dilemma. You have the advantage running the football. Your offensive line has proven itself worthy. The Giants have struggled stopping the run. They're bringing eight guys up every time on first down. First down before Scott Linehan called a little pass in the flat, wide open. But you don't want to get away from who you are. Your core is running the football, but the Giants are basically daring you to throw it on early downs. Ace, five, three. Ace, eight, three, three. Halfway through the quarter. Murray around the right side. Breaks a tackle. Said Hurts look out of the way. And is stopped after a gain of about five. Third and five next. There it is. You can't get any more guys than that around the line of scrimmage. That looks like an old high school game and wing tee and all that kind of stuff. But DeMarco Murray continues, even when they're trying to set the edge outside with stiff arms like that, he's still able to get out there. Big third down here. Blitz coming on the third and five, and Romo is able to exploit it, and he hits Cole Beasley. His first catch of the night goes all the way for a Dallas touchdown. Cole Beasley has only been in for a handful of plays, 45 yards. The Giants get burned on the blitz, and after the extra point, it'll be a four-point game. It's like Julian Edelman or somebody here. A little in, a little out. The Cowboys taking advantage of some pressure brought that time. Jason Pierre-Paul here on the outside. Just missed. Miss Romo, but he just missed getting there before he threw the ball. Even where's Edelman's number? Mm -hmm. You're right. Pretty nice catch and run right there. A little flowing man on the way to the end zone. Bailey for the point after. 6.35 to go in the third. What do you know? We have a game on Sunday Night Football. Love it. 21 17. What's up, everybody? Tony Gonzalez here, urging you to. And away they go. Away they go. And away we go with the kickoff here, which is taken by Preston Parker at the four yard line. Parker, he's a run back to the 24. Tom Coughlin, well, he's used to the heat, and of course, when you're three and seven and haven't been in the playoffs for a couple of years. George Hallis owned the team, so he was 72. Marv Levy, 72, and he stepped away finally in 97. Dick Vermeil, 69, and uh, before that, five years earlier, had won a Super Bowl. Tom Coughlin at 68 this season has won two. Tom, we were talking to Tom the other day, and you know, it reminds me of the old Marv Levy line about, you know, if you start thinking about retiring, you've already retired. So Tom Coughlin not even... Contemplating that as the toss goes to Beckham. And Beckham will be run out. The 22 yard line. Well, you know, when you're three and seven, so we'd like to ask the coaches about this point in the season who your Pro Bowl candidates? <laughs> Coughlin said, the other, don't even ask me. But now he has one tonight. He number 13. He has one out there as well. Plus, I always like to start backwards. People are going to say, is Tom's job on the line? I said, okay, who are you going to get to replace him? Right? You're going to find somebody who's a better head coach than what Tom Coughlin is. You've got Ben McAdoo in his first year with an offense. Remember Ben McAdoo in Green Bay. I'll finish this in a minute. And that's dropped by uh, Williams the screen there. Ben McAdoo in the first time they installed this offense in Green Bay in 2006, they started 4-8. and eight. Then they won their last four to go 8-8 eight and eight that year, went on to the championship game a year later. So you're starting to see signs of maybe this offense getting put together here. Do you really want to blow it up and start all over? Are you going to be better for doing that? I, I can't say that I think that they would. Well, I mentioned before, John Mara was saying before the game about, you know, I want, I want to see some signs of hope. And he's, he's seen him tonight. Third and 12, and you see it here. Catch is made, and that's a big first down by Daniel Fells. These, the Giants have been bogged down offensively in third and long, and they convert. 
They try and drop Mincy out underneath this thing on the tight end, and that is the second big conversion tonight for Daniel Fells. You tend to think of Larry Donnell as being the guy they're going to focus on. Tried to go with a little stunt, a little pressure to the outside the other way, and end up with a defensive end in coverage. Meanwhile, a flag went down at the end of the play. Here's Vinovich. After the play was over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, defense number 32. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Orlando Scandrick, and that's going to take the ball to the uh, 50. Tail end of the play. Yeah. Preston Parker stepped in there, didn't like him talking to Odell Beckham like that, and Scandrick didn't like what Preston Parker had to say, and that's, that's a good teammate right there. Preston Parker jumped in the middle, protected the star player, and even drew the 15-yard foul. And took the shot. Yeah. Yes, Williams is the back. Yep. One, At the 50, first, first down. Chase, Manning. Just throws it into the Cowboy bench. Selby was there. I mean, you know, Chris, we were talking about, you know, Coughlin. And in any town, when you don't make the playoffs for a couple of years in a row, and in New York, I mean, the press has been talking about it all week, and, and Tiki Barber weighed in and all that stuff, and, you know, sports radio goes crazy. But you look at John Mara, saw Steve Tisch before. These guys are, they're deliberate. They're anything but impetuous. They just don't make rash decisions. Jerry Reese is the GM. He's been taking some heat, too. Hey, go 55. Go 55. Right Second and 10 of the 50. On, right set. Spinning away, picks up the first down. 38-yard line. Well, we're all going to be held accountable for the players we pick. And one of the guys that they picked this year was Andre Williams. Now, he has not put up big numbers. He got away maybe with a fumble tonight that really could have changed the complexion of the first half of this game. But Andre Williams is a big, strong guy that knows how to finish runs. And in the open field tonight, he's made a difference. Four and a half up in the third action up front, so they was the play dead. There's Jack Crawford who jumped. Encroachment. Defense number 58. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. I'll tell you, they, you know what's amazing is that, that that's the first penalty yeah. for offside or encroachment against the Dallas defense all season. I'm going to guess Rod Marinelli is not going to like that one too much. Mr. Intensity, and he expects that kind of discipline. But there's a guy that turns over a lot of coaching to his assistant, so those guys get constant individual interaction with their position coaches. Looks for the first and five. Manning's going to throw that one away. The Cowboys are going to contend it to... Jason Garris basically saying he wasn't outside the tackle box. It should be grounding. No intention of grounding as a ball was thrown at the feet of an eligible receiver. Second down. Who might that be? Well, they had Larry Donnell over there right here, and he's really just going to block. But here comes Melton around the edge there. <laughs> so they're going to say that's good enough. Really? <laughs> Can't make this up. <laughs> Second and five. Third, it's good. Here's Andre Williams to the 30-yard line. <laughs> make it third and two. That's Rolando McLean right here. Come up here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's just been, I love this. This is like some old school Giants, Cowboys, important, both teams fighting for the playoffs, even though it's not that it feels like that. And a roll, everybody rolling right. Open up. Beckham, first down. Uh -oh. and he, got, he might get a flank at the end of a crowd. How can you not? Oh, here it comes, yeah. Barry Church, so... Beckham gets the first down. They convert on a third. 
and the land on some more. That's when you know a receiver is getting in your head as a defense when you start hitting them out of bounds. Wait till you see this move. This route really tells it all of what this young man is capable of doing on the outside. You just can't stop and go as fast as he can. Man, coverage, get up the field, plant your foot. And, I mean, that's Brandon Carr. That's a $50 million corner that reacted five yards after Odell Beckham did. And Barry Church There's just no foul to pay for unnecessary roughness. Oh, the running was still inbounds and took a flop. What? And took a flop. <laughs> it's the first time I've ever heard a, a referee announce that. Definitely out of bounds yeah. now. Well, let's go into that. And, <laughs> okay, he did kind of grab for the ball. And then took a flop. That's not too bad. That's a pretty good job by the official. But he was he was hit out of bounds. So the ball at the 18 now. First and ten. Manning. Oh no, that one a little too far for Beckham. He's already scored two touchdowns tonight. Mentioned before five touchdowns this season. Four of them against Dallas. I'll tell you what, if they'd have gotten this one in there with the safety over the top, they could have had more coverage on him, and he ran by both of them. Just missed it. Picking up a little bit. Cowboys after that big Barry Church interception from the 48 to start this drive. Murray over midfield. Back we go to the pick. Eli Manning's played a great game tonight, but not this one. They're going to go play fake here, and there is going to be a monster hole in the middle of this defense. Nobody around, and Eli just sails it. Ends up in the arms of Barry Church who really had a nice turn of events. They pick up the flag, don't give him the 15-yard penalty, and then comes back with a big interception to give the Cowboys now a chance to take the lead. Two and a half left in the third, second and seven. Toss, Murray, a ton of room, and out of bounds at the 30-yard line. Des Bryant threw a nice block to let him go. They do so many of those stretch plays that any time the offensive line starts to move that way, the defense wants to as well. So this time they do a little counter action to that. Good job down the field by Des Bryant. And we have ourselves a ball game. Mm -hmm. for, some, for somebody who is home with the ball, that would not be top of the list how to carry the football. 31 yard line. Here he goes again. This time he can't get outside. As JPP makes sure that uh, he doesn't even reach the line of scrimmage. Jason Pierre Paul has not had the kind of pass rushing year that he's had in the past, but he has been fantastic against the run this year. You get a little flavor of it here. He's so athletic. He really was peeking inside, but still strong enough and athletic enough to jump back outside to make that play. That's some battle. Those are two good players right there. Romo on second and ten. Wide open. Des Bryant and touchdown. Wide, wide open. 31 yards. And the Dallas Cowboys take the lead. Let's make sure he's in bounds the whole way before we do anything else. 
I think that is in. I could not see anything of the foot on the white. Mm -mm -mm. I don't think you overturned that one. Well, I don't think so either. They're going to review as they do all scoring plays. Stevie Brown with the coverage. But really the key was the mobility of Romo, able to get on the edge again physically once he can get out there. Bought time for Des Bryant to go all the way across the field. And you can see just wide open at that point. Brown with safety help, but much too late. So the touchdown follows the interception. The Giants squander a tremendous chance to get into the end zone themselves. The extra point by Bailey is good. It was 68 seconds remaining in the third quarter. The Dallas Cowboys have scrambled all the way back and lead by three. So it's Murray and it's Bryant. And you take a look at these guys, percentage of the team's scrimmage yards. Murray, 39%. Dez, 21% through week 11. Combined 60% highest for any NFL teammates this year. So you go back to Emmett Smith and Michael Irvin in the days of the triplets. 1995, they combined for 64%. Now, of course, you know, you have when Aikman and, and Emmett and Michael did their thing, so there's always a tendency to the, the always valuable Bryant right there. There's always a tendency to want to say, hey, you know, you compare, compare, and all of that stuff, but. You know, with Romo and Murray and, and Bryant, you get three pretty, pretty good players. Well, you do, but they have something else in common now, too. They have rebuilt this offensive line. I always thought that Dallas Cowboys team, those three superstars, their place in the Hall of Fame, well-deserved, don't ever want to take anything away from them. But that offensive line was fantastic. And now with these three young players on the offensive line, Zach Martin, Travis Frederick, and Tyron Smith, they are beginning to develop a core that Tony Romo was the one that said, hey, we don't have to do anything spectacular anymore to win. We just have to make plays that we're capable of making. Oh, and then stepping out of bounds was Preston Parker. So after a series of pretty good runbacks tonight, Sammy's out of bounds early. Well, you have a guy that put on a Superman-like show in the first half. What do you do? You're going to see a whole lot of human beings in the second half. You do not let this guy beat you. Somebody else on the Giants now is going to have to step up and start making plays because clearly the adjustment here has been we are going to leave two players inside out, high, low, whatever you want to call it, on Odell Beckham and not give him a chance to beat us. Manning is 13. Play action. Oh, yeah. Ooh, throws underneath, checks it off to Jennings to the 18 yard line. Missed an opportunity there. Oh, and Eli did this last week too. He just missed chances at home runs. This is a no brainer. He completely wins the battle off the line of scrimmage. There's nobody there. It looked like Eli was looking that way for a moment, but he was under pressure and just didn't think he could get that much on the ball, so he had to check it down. Skandrick stumbled as well. Wow. So another big missed opportunity, and it's second down and five now from the 18. Big hole here for Jennings. That'll be a first down. He takes it to the 25-yard line. That might take us to the fourth quarter. Have to give uh, Larry Donnell a little credit on that one. I got him when he missed the block last time, but he popped that one open. So we've played three. Dallas leads the Giants 24 to 21. And Sunday night football is back after these messages. 24-21. Cowboys by three. The Giants first and 10 from the 25-yard line. He's going to try to dump it off and does live ball. And that's Jennings. Flag is down to the 25-yard line. Tyrone Crawford put the pressure on that time. Going to get a penalty against the Giants.
Bill Vinovich to make the call in a moment. And we got a full confab here. Holding defense number 32. Mm -hmm. Five yard penalty from the end of the run. Wow. Automatic first yep. down. Sorry about that. As he was came in, pointed to the other team, and then winds up calling it on Skandrick. She got a defensive foul, automatic first. Well, remember Skandrick struggled on that last one, and there's the tug, and that is the only sure thing it seems like anymore when it comes to <laughs> pass interference down the field. You grab that jersey, they rarely miss that one. False start. Offense number 83. Five yard penalty. Still first down. That's Preston Parker. So now you'll have a first and 15. Philadelphia won today at home, beat Tennessee. So the Eagles go to eight and three. Cowboys will be either eight and three or seven and four. And then the Giants at three seven right now. And Washington lose, loses to San Francisco three and eight. So Philly plays Dallas Thanksgiving Day in Texas. And then the second Sunday of December in Philly on Sunday Night Football. First and 15. And to the outside, that's Randall making the catch. And he's forced out of bounds after a very short gain. You know, Reuben Randall's one of the guys that really has benefited, I think, most from Ben McAdoo's new offense. Uh, Kevin Gilbride, there were a lot of option routes, a lot of different things you had to convert this route against that coverage into this kind of a play. Ben McAdoo's much more of a call it and run it. Last week, uh, saw Reuben Randall have his best day in a long, long time. He's a gain of three, so it's second and 12. Spencer with the tackle. So the Cowboys clearly making some pretty good adjustments here. An 80-yard drive, a 66-yard drive, and an 80-yard drive to, to open it up all with touchdowns. Then the punt, the half, and then two punts and a pick on the drives here in the second half. And the Cowboys have the Giants in a third and 11. the catch but he cannot get the first down needed 11 wound up getting uh, about nine Odell Beckham making his 10th catch of the night 146 yards it looked like for a moment there if Odell Beckham had just turned that thing up he's going to come right here see if there's a little space if he had turned it straight up the field you can see where the first down like right here he sort of hesitated I thought maybe with as athletic as he is might have been able to dive forward for that one. Well, meanwhile, he's down. He's down right now. Mm. Mm. So an injury timeout for Beckham. Well, there's Beckham live. He was down for uh, 45 to 60 seconds, and they're going to check him out. Among the things uh, that happened to him, he took a, an elbow to the helmet. He's going to go back underneath as they can check him out now after he made that catch and of course Michelle will be on top of this and we'll get the report as soon as we can in the meantime it's fourth down and two and the Giants to punt with Weatherford taking a high snap and getting a line drive kick away field at the 20 Dwayne Harris spinning away and taking it up to the 40 yard line nice run back for Harris and let's go back to the hit on Beckham. He just kind of lost his balance here and stumbled forward and dropped the head and took an elbow to the head. We won't speculate on exactly what it was, but clearly a little edge has gone out of this building oh, yeah. with him walking off the field. And the Cowboys now with the lead and the ball at the 38-yard line. Nice hold there from Murray to the 42. Okay, Michelle.
Michelle, what do you know? Well, Odell Beckham Jr., you saw him go back to the locker room. He is questionable with a back injury, Al. We'll find out more as the evening goes along, but right now in the locker room, questionable. All right, thank you, Michelle. Yeah, we didn't know whether it was the head. We, you can see him get hit in the, uh, in the head, uh, the helmet with the elbow. Then they were looking at his back. They were looking at his ribs. At one point, they were even looking at his shoulder during the commercial. Yeah, and right now the Giants are going to be looking at DeMarco Murray. Got a lead. Now you're going to have to stop it. So Murray with 96 yards tonight, 20 carries. Leading the league and rushing by a mile. Four yards gets him to 100. And he's into triple figures and has a first down. The Marco Murray. Gain of uh, nine yards there. Anytime you want to show pressure here, it leaves yourself vulnerable to these outside stretch plays. You can see it's really just a race between the Dallas Cowboys offensive lineman and the New York Giants defensive line. And that was what Tom Coughlin was trying to emphasize the entire time. Great job on the outside by James Hanna. But it's just a race. And right now, athletically, the Cowboys are getting there first. Well, Murray on a pace right now in which he would gain almost 2,000 yards. It would be 1973. He's gained 100 or more yards now in 10 of 11 games. 100 or more rushing yards. Uh, uh, I just said it right there, counting tonight. So that's right up to the, the moment. 28 carries and catches per game. So he's uh, the workhorse of the league right now. Close to 2,000 yards. Team record Emmett. At 17.73. Second and seven. Murray again to the 42-yard line. So a healthy dose of Murray keeping it on the ground and beginning to chew up a little bit of time. Yeah, NFC Offensive Player of the Month for September and October. And for Eli Manning, you highlighted it early in the show. It has not been his month. Look at that, though. Here you're sitting on the lead, and it's probably the one thing that he doesn't do so well. And now they're going to go empty here on third down and about four. From the 43. Four-man rush. To the outside, great coverage. Pass is incomplete. Zach Bowman knocked it away from Terrence Williams. In comes the punt team. Really nice play by Zach Bowman. The former Bear had three interceptions for them. He's come over here. He and Shockey Brown, who came from the Ravens, really are the two guys that have kind of picked up the pace after Amukamara got hurt. Walter Thurman, Tremaine McBride. It was really a defense built around those corners, and they just couldn't keep them healthy. Another guy they're missing is the middle linebacker, Beeson, is on it, to sure. And that kick will be down at the seven-yard line off the foot of Chris Jones. 9-12 left in the fourth in a three-point game. Looking on. Getting their defense, trying to get pumped up. That defense has done a terrific job after giving up all of the giant points in the opening half. And, of course, no Beckham right now. So you have a whole other story. And first down from the seven-yard line. And this is Jennings who gets spun down after a gain of two. And, and, Caden. and that's really the problem you've got now, Al. I mean, this was a team that had somebody that scared you. To me, the superstars in the league are the guys that have to be double teamed on offense or defense. The J.J. Watts, you know, the, the JPP when he was in his prime, Des Bryant. Now, who do you worry about on this offense? There's no real threat that's going to draw a double team, so now it's tougher to get it to anybody. Maybe Larry Donnell is your next shot. And it goes to Randall. It'll be a first down. Skandrick makes the tackle. So Skandrick, who's been on Beckham all night, now shifts his focus to Randall. The one thing that you do notice is that Reuben Randall is a very good inside player. And when they can get their running game going, some of the play action and the crossing and the slant all starts to really work. But Odell Beckham is the guy who can scare you on the outside. And meanwhile, ooh, there's Skandrick, and that's an issue here for the Dallas Cowboys. 
Sterling Moore, 26, takes his place. And that's a great play in the backfield. Demarcus Lawrence comes in. He's a rookie out of Boise State. So there comes Beckham back onto the field. Demarcus, we're no longer in Dallas. Of course, he's in Denver, but uh, here's the new Demarcus. Right here is going to loop inside this block, and that's the kind of athleticism they kind of hoping that uh, Demarcus Ware he would replace him. He was on IR with a bad foot for the first eight games or so of the season, but he's starting to flash a little bit now, and they need him. All right, halfway through the fourth quarter, you got Beckham back on the bench for the Giants, at least at the moment. Second and 14, and Eli buys a ton of time and then throws, and that's pulled in along the sideline for a first down by Preston Parker. Now you tell me the top of this round. Is this a push off by Preston Parker or not? That's a push off. Yeah. Should have been called, wasn't called. Big play for the Giants. Well, look who's back. So Beckham back in the game. Targeted 11 times, caught 10. You got Brandon Carr on him. The Skandrick not back yet. And now probing the middle for a game of three is Rashad Jennings. You know, one of the things when you have a new offensive line, it takes time for the backs to figure them out as well. Watch Snyder pull around here, and this should have been the run. Instead, he doesn't follow his blocker. If he just follows behind Adam Snyder there, he's going to have a better play. So Skandrick now back in after he missed a couple of plays. Beckham back in. And now you've got Carr on Beckham as Beckham goes to the right side. You got Randall and Skandrick at the bottom of the screen. There you go, matchups. And the pass is thrown into the Careful. ground. Mm -hmm. That could have been well lateral, but it wasn't called. Right down the line of scrimmage, the pressure by Henry Milton that time. It'll be third down and seven. I mean, one thing you always have to keep in mind is that those laterals directly parallel that's a lateral Henry right. Melton's really added a little pop to this defense lately hasn't he he is mm -hmm. come off that ACL and starting to look like him old, his old self Texas guy wanted to go home played in Chicago and they got Skandrick on Beckham again on the left side third and seven and the pass is caught a lot of traffic is there. It's Larry Donnell. So you have Beckham in the neighborhood, but Donnell cutting across, and the Giants with another third down conversion, a gain of 16 here. This is what this guy could do. He's so hot early in the season. Orlando Scandry came off late and gave him a big shot, still held on to it. But he is a guy that could be a difference maker if he could get it going. Three touchdowns in the Monday night game at Washington earlier in the year from the 48 now. The ground again, and Jennings fighting his way. Good tough running there to turn a one-yard gain into maybe four. Let's go to Michelle. Well, Odell Beckham Jr. was back in the locker room. What they did, they decided he had taken a hit to the low back. They massaged that area, stretched it out, and so he's back. And now we have another cowboy down. Right, we'll keep. That's the George Selvey. who's down on the turf. So an injury timeout. For him, you have a second and three after Selby walked off, and they have a swing pass to Rashad Jennings, and Jennings is able to get inside the 20, and Church takes him out of bounds at the 12. Good spin move, avoiding tacklers, takes it down to the 12-yard line, and now you've got Will Peedy who's down. The left tackle is on the turf of the Giants. I tell you, this Rashad Jennings has made a couple of great runs here in the second half and he has just added a dimension just a veteran tough hard-nosed guy who just wants this but right now some of these new york giants offensive linemen just keep going down and it's it's beady right now looks like he stepped on richburg's foot you get james brewer coming in to replace him right there hmm. And on the other side of the field, Barry Church is coming off slowly. And 
Church got a little thigh full on that hit. And this has been old fashioned NFC East. Good football tonight. Match up at the bottom is Beckham and Scandrick. Jennings. Forward progress will take him to the nine yard line and make it a second down and five. Nice little jump cut right there. He was really trying to cram that one up inside and just stopped on a dime and jumped outside and lowered his head. Some odd combinations on this offensive line. You know they have not worked together as a unit very much at all with this combination. And there is Brewer. So Beatty's ready to come back in. The ball at the nine on the second and five. Eli throws a little dart to Jennings to the one-yard line. He goes first and goal for New York. The subtleties of the screen game. That is what this game has really been about so much. We've seen it. An uptick ever since Rashad Jennings come back from that MCL injury. A little feel it out process in the last game and then tonight in this one a clear difference over what Andre Williams was able to provide. 345 and ticking down the ball at the one. And no signal yet. Stop short Jennings. The six inch line. Good luck. You don't want to have a real job. Be a line judge down on the goal line trying to figure that out. Sure. First charge timeout. Dallas. 30 second timeout. So the Cowboys taking a timeout here. Two remaining. It'll be second down and goal. Well, the big play, of course, was the interception. Had everybody fooled. Linebacker stepped up. Eli missed high to Preston Parker, and Barry Church came down with it. And it was Des Bryant due to a little bit of the mobility of Tony Romo that came up with that touchdown. But give credit to Eli Manning. Had a bad play, but he has marched his team right back down the field when he needed it most. What a, what a drive. Shelby is back in. This drive started at the New York 7. I bet they don't throw any fade routes here. No, not, not tonight. 13th play of the drive goes to the fullback, Hynoski. And he is stopped short. So Hymoski cannot get in third down and goal. Isn't it unbelievable? They go three fades on the goal line to try and win it last week. Can't get it done. Now they line up in nothing but power and can't get it done. With the game on the line, now they are 0 for their last six attempts from about here. What do you do? Do you roll out? You roll out. And then you throw it, and it's caught for a touchdown by Adrian Robinson. The number three tight end. His first catch of the night, and the Giants retake the lead. Nice job by Adrian Robinson. Watch how long he stays on this fake. He's going to stay block, 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 sell everybody. His coverage jumps off to go play the run. And J.J. Wilcox is looking around saying, where's my help? He really had Daniel Fells on the outside, so that had to be somebody inside. And he's hot. First touchdown of Robinson's three-year career. And now it's a four-point lead with exactly three minutes to play. Good one on Sunday Night Football. The Giants back up on top by four. Three minutes to go. Cowboys for two timeouts. So Time should not be the issue right here. Jerry Jones watching his team. There's Stephen Jones. 
And uh, their team seven and three trying to stay in a tie with Philadelphia for the lead in the NFC East. If they can pull off the win, then the two teams will battle for first place Thanksgiving Day in Arlington. Tony Romo took over the job in 06, and there it was the 26 game winning drives in the fourth quarter of overtime in that situation right now. And it's started with a short pass to Des Bryant. Rogers Cromarty forces him out of bounds. It'll be second down. After a gain of uh, four, second and six. Isn't it amazing that Tony Romo has those kind of numbers in the fourth quarter, and yet he's known for not being yep. successful in that situation? And here's a pass. That's Witten, who hasn't seen that much action tonight. He's able to score a touchdown on a little shovel pass in the first half. It's a third down and one. It's a pretty critical play coming up right here as we tick down toward the two-minute warning. Big, big third and one, and Murray is able to pick up the first down and a few more up to the 38-yard line. Stevie Brown stops him. The two-minute warning comes with 1.59 on the clock. Cowboys, Giants. Great game tonight. 159 left. Two timeouts for Dallas. Cowboys at the 38. And the Giants coming across the line. Who caused it? Neutral zone infraction. Defense number 94. Five yard penalty. Still first down. We're calling on Kiwanuka. It's a great job by Romo coming out after the timeout. Not letting those pass rushers get hyped up. He puts his foot on the ground. They're hot. And here they come. So a gift five yards. It's first and five now from the 43. And Romo throwing. Beasley, who scored the touchdown earlier, and another big play for Cole Beasley to the 36-yard line. That's a gain of 21. Well, one of the things, if you're going to leave Jameel McLean, the middle linebacker in the game, I think the Cowboys are fully justified in going after him in these situations. Minute and a half now. And Romo, ton of time, dancing. Gesturing flag down. It's caught for the moment by Witten. Cowboys moving down the field, but let's see what the call is going to be. The indication from side judges that it's going to be against the Giants. If it is, it'll be declined. Holding. Defense number 29. Penalties declined. Result of the play. First down. All right, so it's to the 21 yard line phenomenal protection the greatness of this offensive line raises its head when it's needed most watch this i don't know it's been a while since i've seen that much time standing in the pocket against a four-man rush seven and a half seconds and now you have everything at your disposal you can run the football they're going to play back they're going to play in this prevent kind of stuff don't be surprised now if they turn around and run the football a little bit here they didn't yeah. give Eli too much time the other way. And they have the time. Obviously needing a touchdown down by four. Romo to the outside. Bryant spins away. And Bryant is good for a gain of about seven yards on that play. Make it eight. It'll be second down and two. How about that move for a 220-pound guy on the outside? Looked like he was going to try and head straight out of bounds out here this way. Fakes it towards the boundary, goes right back inside. And right now, Romo is going to pay attention to everything. Obviously got a score, but you're trying to milk a little clock. You're trying to do everything here. Keep that guy right there. 
play clock under five. Second and two. Romo. Little pump fake again. Protection is phenomenal. And then he throws and it's caught with a touchdown. Des Bryant. What work by that line. They gave him seven and a half seconds a couple of plays before and probably about the same here. You can't do it better than this. You cannot do it better than this with this offensive line. Two plays, two perfect protections. Romo stays alive. Des Bryant finally gets open in the back of the end zone. Cannot blame Dominic Rogers Cromarty. Watch Tyron Smith here. He's going to get him on the ground, shove him down, stay with it. One of the most athletic pass rushers there is. Tyron Smith had a few slip-ups in this one, but when it mattered most, this offensive line was dominant. As they always do, just checking to make sure it is a touchdown. Waiting for Vinovich. Time out. And upstairs are going to take a peek at this one with 61 seconds. Vinovich under the hood. When we see the replays, we think this thing is going to stand as a touchdown. Here's Vinovich. Well, Bill's getting ready to make the call, and here he is. After reviewing the play, the ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. Not confirmed, so they weren't absolutely sure. He did see the movement that you saw, but it stands, which means there's not enough to overturn it. And I think that's the right call. So, Eli, your turn now. He has 61 seconds. Giants have all of their timeouts. And all the Giants would need, of course, is a field goal to probably send the game into overtime. And Bailey makes it a three-point game. So back and forth we go. Bryant. Seven catches, 86 yards. The first half belonged to Odell Beckham. For a pretty good second half for one Des Bryant. And, of course, that offensive line has just been tremendous. So here we go from the 20-yard line. Giants trying to snap that losing streak at five. And the Cowboys trying to stay in a tie for first place with the Eagles. and then it's dropped. It's dropped over the middle by Jennings. Second down and 10. That time Henry Melton dropped back into coverage so they only rushed three and was sitting sort of right there. But Henry Melton's a guy working inside against the rookie Weston Richburg. That's going to be an interesting one to watch because as far as quickness right off the line of scrimmage, he is the man. Henry Melton. Switching sides now, coming right there. Beckham again. Beckham is standing in. Beckham and then over the middle, that is caught. 27 yard line. That is Larry Donnell. But it's going to be third down, and the clock will stop as the Giants will take a timeout. First charge timeout. Now, you're going to see a lot of extra help anywhere you see number 13 now. Odell Beckham is going to have to work really hard to come up with a play, and he has looked not quite the same since he's come back out here. We haven't seen mm -hmm. quite the explosiveness out of him. Third and two from the 28. Pressure McLean back covering on Donnell, and so here's your ball game on a fourth and two. Going to get some pressure inside right there from Tyrone Crawford, who I think got a little banged up on this play. But if he had to have one rush in him all night, coming off of that MCL injury, 
He got a good one there, and now Eli has to answer it. Giants must get a first down on a fourth and two from the 28 yard line. Four man rush. Checks it off. Forward progress is where? Moving in, the official will spot it at the 30. That's Jennings, and that will be a first down. So the Giants just barely get the first down. And they're begging for a check upstairs on that one. Don't get it. They don't get it. Yes, well, they maybe do. they do because the Giants try to get the, the play away. Now you've got Vinovich. Previous saying, play is under review. Yep. Did he get the first down? Meanwhile, you've got 23 seconds. They put a little bit more on the clock yep. after the review here. Take a look again. Where is the ball? I don't think it ever gets back across the line, but he caught it right about the line. Mm -hmm. well, there's the ball. He has to get to the 30. It's not there yet. No, I, I don't think it gets nope. there. Once it's there, if they're going to give him credit for it, it's going to have to be sort of at the high point of that catch, but his feet aren't on the ground. Where is he first contacted? Right there. Where is the ball when he's first contacted? Is the issue. I don't think it ever gets to the line. I don't think it does either. And this is one where you don't have to look for any other markings except the 30 yard line. If the nose of the ball reaches the front of the chalk of the 30 yard line, it is a first down. If it doesn't, the game is in effect over. The very front tip edge of that line right. is where it has to be. I mean, that is right on the line. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, the, the yellow line is right there, but the, 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 obviously the official line here is the stripe, the actual 30-yard line stripe. And the unfortunate part, it would have been so easy for Rashad Jennings to get another. <laughs> and there's Dez with his striped shirt on going that. Mm -hmm. But it would have been so easy to push oh. up beyond. Oh. Cowboys are pretty certain they're going to win this. Who knows? Nobody knows anything. Jason Garrett does, Jerry Jones does, and Tom Coughlin does. Just not all the same thing that they know. No, we don't. We don't think the ball got there, but we know nothing. Remember that conclusive thing. We thought. It looked like a fumble down there, too. It has to be with absolute certainty. There can't be doubt. Your name again? I'm sorry. <laughs> Here comes Vinovich. After reviewing the play, the receiver did not get to the 30-yard line. That was fall, first down. Please yeah. reset the game clock to 40 seconds, 4-0. And that'll do it. i tell you what, listen to that cheer. What's so odd this year is that a lot of you know Giants fans are frustrated a lot of talk about the Giants fans selling their tickets to Cowboy fans so you have a ton of Cowboys fans here in contrast to that in Dallas this season one of the big stories has been the Cowboy fans are selling their tickets to visiting teams fans and there's a story right there and that look we've seen few times too many out of Tom Coughlin. His guys played their guts out today. But when everything was on the line, Tony Romo answered, and the Giants couldn't. And it comes on top of a night that started with Beckham making one of the most incredible catches ever seen by anybody anywhere at any level of football. Giants sprinted out to a big lead, scored on their first three possessions. And the Dallas Cowboys have now won as many games in 11 games this year as they have in each of the last three seasons at the end of the year when they wound up eight and eight in each of the last three years. They're eight and three. They're tied for first. They play Philly on Thanksgiving night, and then they play them again in Philly on a Sunday night in December. 31-28. Dallas wins it. Coming up next, Volkswagen Post Game Report after these messages. So there's the game with one of the great catches of all time. And